Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. Therefore, let not your heart be troubled. This is the good news from El Paso. Welcome. Honey, please welcome our wonders, wonderful audience. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us indeed. Thank you for this day. You are good in Christ Jesus. All is well with you. Just continue to watch and invite others. Thank you for joining us. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence always with us by the Holy Ghost. And we know that by your anointing, we are going to hear what you are telling us today. And we are going to apply them, apply them into our lives. And our lives will never be the same again. Because we now be led by your spirit in everything we do. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Our topic today is this. Does a Christian need another deliverance? deliverance? Before we go into this discussion, honey, please, read this scripture for me. Galatians chapter 1, verse 12 to 13. Please read it. Hallelujah. Yes, the question here is, does a Christian need deliverance? Colossians 1, 12 to 13, giving thanks unto the Lord, unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Look at what that scripture is saying. Hallelujah. You say we Christians have been delivered from the power of darkness and that we have been transferred into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. If we have been delivered as Christians from the power of darkness and transferred into this kingdom of light, do we need another deliverance? Why do we need another deliverance? Because today you see around the, uh, in the world, many Christians say, oh, I need deliverance from this. I need deliverance from that. They go, they, in fact, the ministries now they call themselves deliverance ministries. What other deliverance do we need? Do we now need to be delivered from the kingdom of light where we are translated back into the kingdom of darkness? No. We believe that a Christian does not need deliverance. You are no longer in bondage. A Christian can be oppressed. They cannot be possessed by the devil. So you don't need deliverance. Honey, isn't that true? Hallelujah. Exactly true. See, I used to think, uh, you know, about, I used to think about getting deliverance. Oh, you need deliverance. And there are some churches that focus on deliverance, deliverance. It's a deception from the devil. From the devil. Do you know what that means? The devil is trying to tell you, well, Jesus Christ has not delivered you. Mm -hmm. the, Jesus Christ has not saved you. Therefore, you need deliverance. It's like bringing you down from where the Lord has placed you. We are seated at the right hand of God in Christ Jesus. Far above all principality, power, dominion, and might. And the devil is throwing this lie to us. We need to stop buying his lies. You see, we do not want to come just, it's like you, you God has placed you far above all. And the devil wants you, wants you to be under. So now, the choice is clear. Which, which choice do you make? So what do we do? We refuse to listen to the voice of the devil. Do you know what God calls the devil? A slanderer. Just slanderer, a deceiver. So don't be deceived. Rejoice in your deliverance. Rejoice in that deliverance that Jesus has given us. So let us know that we can only give thanks where we are and refuse the devil. Look at what we are telling you here. We just read from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, 12 to 13. Honey, please, let us look again at Ephesians, chapter 1, 21 to 22. Now, this is what we are, what we are saying. This is what the, gospel, the word of God is telling you. You are a Christian. You have been delivered. You have been sanctified and justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. You do not need another deliverance. Honey, please read for us Ephesians chapter 1, 21 to 22. What does it say? We have been placed far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, 
not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and had put all things under his feet, under the feet of Christ, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Well, it's like I said it. <laughs> this, the word of God is true. So what do you want to do then? Be delivered from the hands of Christ? Be delivered from the heavenly places where you are sitting in Christ Jesus, above all principalities and powers? You see, we are held in bondage by our lack of understanding or our little understanding. But when you understand the power in that name, Jesus Christ, remember the Bible says in the book of Hebrew that God created the world through Jesus Christ, this word. But he said by whom he created the world and by whom he is sustaining the world. There was a name reserved for the creation of the world. For the deliverance of man, that name is Jesus. God used that word to create, the world, to create the world. He used that name to deliver the world. And he has given you that name. You have that name. He said, in this name you heal the sick. If by this name you, you, you raise the dead. By this name you cast out demons. How can, you, how can someone you can cast out hold you in bondage? It's impossible. We got to believe God. Isn't that true, dear? Hallelujah. Now, this is not a joke because Jesus wants us to be serious. We really need to be uh, more than conquerors, be victorious. I refuse to be defeated. I refuse to be a victim. So let us know that Jesus Christ has dethroned Satan, defeated and destroyed his power where, you, where we are, the Christians. So now he has giving us authority, power and dominion over the devil and his works and all his cohorts of hell. So let us not go back. We, the church of Christ, we need to go into the scriptures and know who we are and know the authorities that we have. And don't wait for somebody to tell you and then tell you uh, what is not even true some, most of the time. So... Go in and check on this, uh, these scriptures today. See, we have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of light. It's okay. A lot of times we go through things. But do not allow the devil to take hold of your mind, to start messing with you and letting you know you are not what Jesus is saying. Just like he told Eve in the, in the garden, did God say? So he's telling you now, the devil is trying to trick you again. Did God say? Yes, tell him God said, and it is settled in, in, in your spirit, in your soul, in your being. So give thanks to God always. See, when we spend time focusing on our hurts, our woes, that's when the devil comes in and start throwing things in your mind to see if you're going to buy one. So when we buy the lies of the devil, we have taken 10 steps backward. We refuse to do that. So Christ is enthroned over all. So he has dethroned the devil. And know that the devil cannot mess with you if you know who you are and know whose you are. Today, rise up. We want you to rise up. See, we are not here playing around. As you can see, we are not doing advertisement or anything because this is all good news. Good news to let you know you are delivered. You do not need deliverance again. You can deliver yourself. You can deliver your family. If you think, well, the devil is troubling us, then stand your ground and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, by whose blood we have been delivered and saved, cast, cast the devil out, cast the demons out. Take authority, go around your house and take ownership of your environment. Let's look at this scripture, Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 to 23. What does it say? It says, Are you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now had he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight? Mm. Look at that. Mm. With all that, if you say you, are, you need a, 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 a deliverance, it means you, you say Jesus didn't do a perfect work. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
What he did wasn't enough, so I need another helper. I needed this pastor to deliver me. I need this delivery minister to deliver me. You are speaking to the face of our Lord and Savior. I'm sorry, you watched this close, but uh, it wasn't clean. I'm taking it back to, to, to the cleaner. My brother, my sister, you have been delivered. It's like the devil met Adam and Eve in the garden. He said, you will be like God if you eat this fruit. But they were already like God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he deceived them. He's telling you now you need deliverance. My dear, you already delivered. You don't need deliverance. What you need is use your authority in the name of Jesus Christ and tell the devil, get out of here. You have no place in this place. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, at the mention of that name, he must bow. He must leave. Everything in this planet Earth, living or non-living, visible or invisible, reacts to the name of Jesus Christ when it is called. They react in two ways. Either they come or they leave. But they must react to the powerful name of Jesus Christ. You do not need deliverance. All you need is to apply the power of the name of Jesus Christ over every circumstance. Is it financial need? Call upon that name. Do you have a health challenge? Call upon that name. Do you have any challenge in your, in your house or in your workplace? Command it to live in the name of Jesus Christ. The wonderful name of Jesus. The glorious name of Jesus. That powerful name, Jesus. That's all you need. And the enemy knows he cannot stand that name. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I, I don't know how we can pound this. It's like we are pounding it so that somebody can get it. Get it. See, do yourself a favor. That's what I do. See, I did myself a favor. I just uh, downloaded a free Bible. Free Bible. New King James Version. That is better. And then, guess what? I let it play. Even if I'm busy, it's playing. My spirit is receiving it. Let this words get into us. Because if not, see, the world is going somewhere real fast. And if we, are not, if we don't take authority, the devil is deceiving so many people. So many people. So many Christians even. Oh, Lord, help us. Help, I, help the church. See, we have been reconciled to God. Jesus has reconciled us to the, to the Father. And the Father now sees us as holy, flawless. Sees us as he sees Christ Jesus. He loves us like he loves Christ Jesus. And he has given us everything we need. Power, authority, dominion, every good thing. See, a lot of times because of our distractions and our ignorance, stop being ignorant, actually. Because he said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Because of ignorance, now the devil can mess around with you. God forbid, refuse that today. See, because he sees us, God sees us as his own beloved children. Therefore, what do we need to do? Be grounded in this truth. Be steadfast in it. Be steadfast in the gospel. Be steadfast. Steadfast is when you know this is what God says. Can God lie? No. Then be steadfast in it. Be grounded in it. How do you do that? By speaking it, repeating it to yourself, meditating it until your mind gets it. See, your mind, our minds have been loaded with a lot of negatives. Now we need to put the scriptures to flush all the negatives out. It's like computer, garbage in, garbage out. Now we are putting the word of in, the word of God in to dispose all the garbage. So take charge, take charge and don't sit and wait for things to happen. Make things happen. Honey, yes, while we're talking, please, can you look for me in the book of James, uh, chapter 4, verse 7? What we, what we are saying here is that you are in charge. The Bible describes you as a holy nation, a chosen generation, a holy priesthood, that you have been transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, that you are no more what you used to be, that you are a new creature, a new creature that is above what you used to be. You are a new creature that the devil cannot deceive anymore like he deceived Adam in the Garden of Eden. He can deceive you because the Bible said that those that are in Christ, if it were possible, they could be deceived. So it's not possible for you to be deceived. Why are you accepting deception? Honey, please read that scripture for us. James 4, 7. 
Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Flee, not walk from you. Look at that. Hallelujah. All you have to say, nope, it's not going to happen. He is going to flee. Why? Why? Because the Bible says that he is going around seeking for those that he will destroy. Hmm. He will come to you and he look, so I can't destroy this one, and he leaves. Are you one of those? He will come and say, I can't destroy. Or are you one of those? He will come and say, wow, this is an easy prey. You'll be an easy prey if you don't know the scriptures. You'll be an easy prey if Jesus Christ is not Lord of your life. You'll be an easy prey if you are afraid, instead of hearing God say, fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed. Be not, be not, be not discouraged. I'm your God. I will help you. I will strengthen you, and I will uphold you with the iron of my righteousness. The question is not, is God going to do it? The question is, will you believe it? Because it's done unto you as you believe. My brothers and sisters, please stop seeking for deliverance. Jesus has delivered you. That's the message we have for you today. That's the message the Holy Spirit has for you this, this day. Stop seeking for deliverance. You are making the devil feel that, yeah, Jesus didn't do a good job. That's what he says. Yeah, they believe he didn't do a good job. And the more you seek him, the more he brings more trouble in your life. The more you seek deliverance from the hands of the devil. When Jesus Christ told you that they that believe in me, he said, no one will be able to take them out of my hand. No one will be able to take them out of the hand of my father. And you think you are being under bondage? You need deliverance from who? From the hands of Jesus? Wake up. Wake up. So therefore then, three words. So therefore then, those are powerful words. What do you do? Testify of your deliverance, of your deliver, delivered life. You are delivered. Tell the devil I'm delivered. Testify of the goodness of the Lord. Testify of your salvation. Stand firm and advance in your faith. See, every time you're speaking the word of God, you're advancing in your faith because faith comes by hearing the word of God. So every time you're speaking the word of God, you're hearing it. It makes a difference in your life. So share the good news. Share it. As you do these things, you are being strengthened. You are being strengthened. So my brothers and sisters, today is your day of saying, yes, I've heard. Now I'm going to leave it. Leave this truth, because the devil, the deceiver, the liar, the slanderer, he will bring a lot of stuff to make you fall. Even if you're going through things, well, know that uh, you, you are Christ's, and you are going some, through something because the devil hates, hates everybody, not even only Christians. But know that you are more than a conqueror. You are victorious. You can never be defeated. Yes, so what do we have to take in addition to this standard faith that we are delivered? Let's look at the book of um, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Okay. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. What does it say, honey? Wherefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day. Now, what, what are these armor? When you look at the scripture, go back to, uh, go to the, maybe start, start reading the whole of Ephesians chapter uh, 6. It will, give, it will give you the, the armor of God. And do you need those armors? Yes, well, you're already in you. You already have it. And it's all wrapped up in the name of Jesus Christ. It's all wrapped up in the word of God. It's all wrapped up in the blood of Jesus Christ. See? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, stand. Wow. See? Don't, never give up. Yes, you stand. We are making this broadcast in the month of March. We, I'm going to use this word today. Begin to march. March. Take your march in the truth that you have been delivered. March in the truth that nothing is impossible unto you through the name of Jesus Christ. March in that belief that you are of God and that you have overcome the world. March in that belief conception that greater is he 
that is in you than in the world. March with your sh shoulders held high. Mm -hmm. March with this armor around you. Yes. March. Knowing that Jesus is coming again for a perfect, whole, strong church. March. Are you marching? Or are you sitting down? Or are you just strolling? A soldier marches with his shoulders held up, with his weapon in his hand, strong and perfect. This is the month of March. My brothers and sisters, begin to march. March, because nothing can ever hold you in bondage anymore. You have been delivered by the stripes of Jesus Christ healed, sanctified by his cross, justified by his resurrection. You are a child of God. March. Hallelujah. I received that for myself. And I refuse to be victim of the devil. God forbid. Refuse to be a victim of the devil. It doesn't matter how you feel today or how you're going to feel tomorrow. Know this one thing. Jesus is on my side. He is inside me by his Holy Spirit. I will never give up. And I do not, will never allow the devil to gain one more inch in my life. See, this, this has, let me ask you, do you know about soldiers? See, they get suited up. They get their weapons. They don't just sit down. They just stand. And they fight and win. Thank God for those ones that never give up. So you are a soldier in the lost army. Stand your ground. Take up your weapons, the word of the living God. Now, scatter all evil forces, left and right, front and center. Well, guess what? Jesus already defeated them. You enforce their defeat. You enforce Christ's triumph upon the dethroned rulers of this world, upon the dethroned Satan and his cohorts of hell, upon the dethroned elements of the world. We need to stop being wimpy Christians. Let's come out of the closet. Stop being in the, I refuse to be in the closet. Don't be in the closet another day. Everybody is coming out of the closet. Refuse to be in the closet. Take up your weapon. It's in your mouth, the word of God, and stand your ground. And most importantly, remember what, what uh, James 4, 7 said? Submit to God. Then resist the devil. Don't go resisting the devil without submitting to God. Mm -hmm. Because then the devil will work. a risk. Degree. Submit to God. How do you submit to God? You know who you are. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I, I stand in the word of God. The Holy Spirit is living inside of me. Right there, you, are sub you have submitted to God. Yeah. And then you go forth and speak and let the enemies fly. They don't walk. They just fly away from you. They flee. So this is our good news today to you from the Lord Jesus Christ. His word is true yesterday, today, and forever because he is his word. And this <clears> word, <throat> if you put it in your, in your heart, in your spirit, and speak it through your mouth, you will never be defeated. It does Now, all of us go through things, but we stand our ground and say, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We can never be defeated. So that is your, your weapon. The weapon is in your mouth. <laughs> Open your mouth and use it. Wonderful, wonderful. So we have talked to you today about the fact, the truth, that you don't need any more deliverance. You have been delivered. Amen. Now, for those that, um, we are speaking to those who have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and confess that he is their Savior. Those who have asked and the Holy Ghost is in them, directing them. But what you have to know is that we, talk, we, can, we say they can do all this through the name of Jesus Christ. Who is this Jesus Christ? This is God Almighty who took flesh and came into the world. For one purpose, to deliver you from the hands of the enemy. He died for you so that you don't have to die. He became sin so that you don't have to stay in sin. The Bible says he was poor so that you will be rich. He was rejected so that you will be accepted. So you are not on the bondage you were supposed to be in. He took it upon himself. He set you free. Now Jesus died for you. He rose for you. And if you want to enjoy these glorious blessings of salvation and deliverance from the hands of the wicked one, we are going to tell you now to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and be free. For how long? 
as they say in Latin, peromia secula seculorum, forever and ever. Honey, please, welcome our brothers and sisters. Tell them, show them how to accept salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And remember, again, Jesus came to establish his kingdom through you in this world, that you it has become his. Now that you have become his, now that you will become his, those that are coming into Christ, now you walk in his kingdom. You become the kingdom leader. You take over. And anytime you destroy the work of the devil, you are, you, you're, you're in the kingdom of God. You're establishing that kingdom in this world. See, he has finished it, brought us to the new kingdom. Now, for those of you that are watching and you have not made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, welcome. Today is your day of salvation. Now, I know you would like to receive this wonderful Jesus, the one that died for you and resurrected and is seated at God's right hand. So let's go to it. Repeat after me from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. I believe you came, suffered, and died for me. On the third day, I believe God raised you from the dead. I ask you to forgive me my sins, be my savior. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. And now, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may reign in this world as your kingdom citizen. Now, speak to the Father and say, Father God, thank you for receiving me into your kingdom. I thank you and I bless your name. Now start reading the Bible. That's how you know who you are and begin, begin to be strong and know the authority and power you have in the, in the Lord Jesus. Yes, my brothers and sisters, stop seeking for deliverance. Believe you have been delivered. All you have to do now is to enforce your deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ, and you experience deliverance by the power of the Holy Spirit who is in you. God loves you. Remember, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. <laughs>